I watched the greatest boxing fight of our generation live in person. Even though I watched Pacquiao Marquez, I think like at my uncle's house. But I did watch Logan Paul and KSI do a thing in Manchester, and I really want to talk about it. Even though I'm, to say the least, late on the scene. So your first thought is probably, GG, why? Great question. I actually follow all the Misfits boxing events, along with all the influencers that fight. I watched the Creator Clashes, I went to the second one live, I've watched Ludwig's chess boxing event, I followed the Kingpin tournament until that just stopped being a thing. I honestly really like the influencer boxing scene, and I've been wanting to go to a Misfits event for a while now. So when they announced the Prime card and started to slowly spoon feed us the matchups, I very much wanted to go. But it's all the way in Manchester. Fuck it. I was on the pre-order list or whatever, so they would notify me first when tickets were available. So I was able to get one before it sold out almost instantly. By the way, I'll have chapters for everything, so if you wanna skip around or just hear me talk about the fights, you can do that. I'm gonna talk about travel for a bit. So I'm going to the Prime card. I'm going to Manchester. I booked my flight and I had to fly eight and a half hours to Munich because I had a layover in Germany. And for those of you who suck at geography like I do, that's going past Manchester. In fact, while I was on the flight, I could see in the little cartoon plane that was going and on our screens, me sail right past Manchester. I like, I was looking down like, oh yeah, that's my hotel right there. Is a, a, do you guys mind? Does this have stuff like the bus? There was no direct flights, I don't know what to tell you. So I landed in Munich, beautiful airport. It's like its own fucking city. And after going up nine floors, taking a train, walking nine miles, I found my gate for my connecting flight. Nine miles, <laughs> get it, this guy's good. And you're gonna hear me throw some random little culture shock moments out there, right? The first one being, you guys have a smoking lounge out there in the airport that serves one purpose and one purpose only, to have this bitch smell like a casino. I remember double taking it and being like, oh, Okay, and I don't know why in my mind I was like, that makes sense, even though I have no legitimate reasoning as to why that makes sense. But I felt so American that I was like, I need to partake in this. I need to be a part of it. You know, go in there and be like, hey, you know, pass me one of those. Yeah, one of the, what the fuck did you call me? So I still had like 40 minutes to blow. And I thought, I mean, I gotta have a beer in Germany, right? I looked at the local time, 7.30 a.m. It could be six. So I find the one bar open, I get me a stein, and honestly, it's kind of poetic. Because the sun is rising, I sit by these big ass windows, I'm in fucking Germany, and I enjoy myself a frosty. And you know what? There was other fellas doing the same, so I'm not fucking crazy, but it was beautiful. Another thing, toilets. Everywhere I went to go see a toilet, I noticed you guys weren't a big fan of the oval shape. Even when I was in the UK, I saw a bunch of circles, damn near squares, and I'm not complaining, just an observation. Also, the paper towel dispenser that doesn't dispense paper towels. I looked like a fucking idiot the first time I went to go wash my hands. This was in Germany. Because it's basically cloth that you extend and then you dry your hands with the cloth and then you walk away. And then that's the interaction. And then the machine does something. I'm assuming bring new cloth out. So I'd actually gone to the bathroom a few times because Tiny Bladder's gang. After I got the hang of it and I knew what I was doing, that's when I started to get, you know, respected by my, by my fellow peers. Peers. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, we're on fire, baby, let's go. No, but seriously, I would go to wash my hands again and I would see another guy yanking on it, trying to take a piece off and I'd be like, this fucking racist. And this could have just been my flight experience, but another crazy thing I saw was when we were boarding, the people didn't get up until their group number was called. It was wild to see. It could have just been that flight. Maybe I got the most perfect people in the world together for one flight. Cause I don't know if you guys know this. In America, you've got group seven looming by the counter like that's gonna change something. Like for some reason, United's gonna be like, you know what? Today, we're actually gonna go in reverse order. <laughs> so good thing you guys are here. I've personally never understood it, but unfortunately, because that's just the way things work out, I end up doing the same stupid shit too. Standing by like the end of the line where it's not too egregious, where people weren't thinking you're in line. That's a lie, people do that too. They'll also still be there. I'll think they're in line, they're not. They're waiting for this line to dwindle. It's a whole thing. You'll hear the person over the intercom. Okay, at this moment, uh, we would like to welcome anyone with a disability and active military. And for some reason, seat 85C will, will flinch a little bit. Uh, get, get up. Huh? What was that? Why are you worried? Like it's not harming anybody, but it also just causes traffic jams for no reason. Like bro, go take a lap. You will miss nothing. You're gonna make the flight and you're gonna have 
this same seat. And also, before I forget, I had a great conversation at uh, the airport bar with Lou. So I wanna quickly shout out Lou and Laurel. Appreciate you guys. It was a great start to the vacation. So I boarded the flight in Germany in two more hours and I'll be in Munich. It is currently Friday morning. I left Thursday afternoon. So I make it to Manchester and I get to baggage claim and the first thought I have is, it smells like piss. I finally walk out into Manchester and I see it and it is uh, rainy, shitty, and gloomy. And I love it, honestly. That's my type of weather. That's not a complaint at all. But a complaint I do have, which genuinely plagued my vacation. You know how when you're descending in the airplane, your ears will pop? You see, there was a bit of a problem on my end because I was congested on my flights. So when you're congested, that process struggles a bit to process. It's a thing called airplane ear because I had a lot of time to Google it when I was suffering <laughs> on the descent. Because that's not working out, pressure will now start to build up. And as it says in the definition, start to possibly cause pain in your ears. It did, or possibly affect your hearing. It absolutely did. I had to take off my headphones because I was scared like it was causing, causing some, some sort, sort of fucking physical reaction inside or like this probably isn't helping. And I did all the things, I was chewing gum, I kept like, stretching my jaw, I kept swallowing, pause. I was trying to stop it in every way I could and there was nothing I could do. My congestion was just too strong and essentially fucked me over. So for my entire vacation, even afterwards a little bit, I could not properly hear. My left ear was at about 80% and my right ear was at about 30, 35. And I was hoping it would go away the first day. It didn't. It just slowly went away with time, but pretty much my entire time in Manchester, my awareness level was a little trash. It's kind of fucked up because I was able to randomly make my ears pop. And when I would do that, I would be like, taken aback. Like, oh shit, this is what it sounds like? But then it slowly closes up. And I could only do that so many times. It sucked ass, but we move. So I'm in Manchester and I take a streetcar to the hotel. And the nicest guy drove me and he knew all about the fights. He's the one who brought him up. He was like, so here's the question. Did you come here to watch the fights? And I was like, oh shit. Yeah, absolutely. We had a good conversation about it and I didn't tip him. Hold on. So we have a long ride. He's being real nice. We're talking about things. And I kept thinking, tipping's not a thing over here, right? I thought that was the thing. I thought we were the ones with that stupid system. Almost like, oh, is he gonna take offense if I try to tip him? But in hindsight, I probably should have asked, which I didn't. I suck for that interaction. I'm not gonna lie, I felt bad for a while. So uh, if you're watching this, Sir, I gave you my YouTube name, but I'm pretty sure you don't care anymore because you're like this fucking cheap bastard. If you're watching this, um, I'll Venmo you, I swear. Just prove it was you. I will take care of you. I'm sorry. I also couldn't hear half the fucking things you were saying because I was, I kept like doing this in the back seat. Like what? what was that? Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry fucking sucks. So, uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm with you on that one. It was tough. Now, one thing I quickly noticed when I was over there was, oh, I don't have any signal on my phone, which I probably should have realized that would be a thing. But once the hotel had Wi-Fi, I figured it out with my carrier. We were okay. So it's Friday morning and I'm in Manchester. The fight is the next night. The weigh-in is today, but I was still like four hours out and I was exhausted because I hadn't slept. I initially tried sleeping on the flights, had an issue with that, couldn't sleep. So I was like, okay, well I gotta stay up then, right? And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what the game plan was, but here I was tired as fuck. My hearing was at its worst. It felt like I was constantly underwater and I just wanted, I just wanted to take a nap. That's it. So as I'm laying in bed, I buy a ticket for the weigh-in. I set a bunch of alarms and I wake up seven hours later. So I missed the weigh-in. Missed the weigh-in. Missed the, missed the weigh-in. Fat man. That's funny. Someone put that in a, in a verse. And when I woke up at that time, I still didn't want to get up. I was fully ready to just call Friday. I was just gonna call it a day. That's how tired I was. Keep in mind, I'm only gonna be there three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I leave Monday morning. So I got out of bed, I forced a shower, see if I could maybe splash in some water would help out. Even then, I still really wasn't on board to leave the room. At this point, it was kind of a combination of things, right? I was tired. I was also thinking, fuck, I wish I explored Manchester during the day, because now I feel like, you know, you're just jumping in the deep end. But now, you know, you're, you're at night. Mr. Wayne can't see a whole lot of things. If you're out at night, it's almost like you gotta know where the fuck you're going. And also, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm planning to do. I'm hungry as shit. I'm thirsty as shit. So I go over to the mirror and I have a little pep talk with myself saying, hey, you spent all this money to be here. You gotta fucking do something. There's no way you're gonna sleep in. Like maybe if you came in the day before and you got here like at 7 p.m. Thursday night, sure. 
sleep your life away, wake up Friday morning, bright and early, go get yourself some fucking teen crumpets. But time is a wasting. So I forced myself to dress up and I remembered in Germany, a little Germany mart in the airport, I'd gotten something called Asbach Cola, I think, or Asbach Cola, I don't know. No clue what it was. I think it was booze and it looked pretty cool. And I had popped that in the fridge when I first got in my room. It was a 10% dog. <gasps> So I grabbed it, keep in mind, really wish I had water, <laughs> but I grabbed it and I was like, okay, if I slam this, I have no choice but to go out. It's like slamming pre to force yourself to work out. It's like, okay, well, I already have this in me. I have to use it. So I slammed it and out the door I went. And here we are in the beautiful city of Manchester at night. I had asked one of the guys at the front desk, I was like, what do I do? And he was like, oh, you want to go to a club? And I was like, not really. Just kind of want to hit like a bar or something. He was like, oh, so clubs. And I was like, is that... Is that what you guys call cl clubs are a little different from what I, he, whatever, he guided me to some way. I was like, sure. I don't think I even ended up going where he told me to go because I got lost. And I could probably talk like another 10 minutes about this night alone, but I'll try to just hit the highlights real quick. One, it's cold as shit. It's not cute fall weather. Oh, who so, it's just cold. So I get food somewhere and I explore the nightlife. Barcade AQ64, I think was the most fun because there was a DJ there and he was DJing his ass off. And can I just say, the payment at the bars is so much simpler than it is in the States. And I think it is the differential in tipping culture. Because anytime I went up to the bar to get a drink, it was just tap to pay. You tap to pay everywhere. They give you a little counsel, boop. Thanks, here's your pint, fuck off. There's no open or close tab. They don't take your card to the POS system back there and start beep beep booing. You don't sign a fucking receipt. What do you want? Click. Sometimes it'd be like, do you want to leave a tip? Fucking, you know, like a pound. Yeah, sure. Boop. And then you, you get, you go away. I loved it. I think they got us beat on that by a mile. But I roamed around the arcade, played Killer Instinct because I love that shit. And it was funny because the bar was pretty packed, but there was one game that was oddly open all the time. NBA Showtime. I was bamboozled because back home, there are lines forming around the block to play a game like this, to play the NBA jams and all that shit. And it took me so long to realize, oh, you guys don't give a fuck about basketball. You guys have no reason to give a fuck about basketball, let alone old basketball. You guys think Tony Kukoc is a luxury brand. So anyway, fast forward me popping in and out of places. I'm heading back to the hotel and I see a bar on the side and I'm like, ah, let me pop in. Yeah, one more drink. Why not? I'm still out. And this should be the longest part of the story, but I don't want to make this video longer than it already is. Long story short, I ended up drinking with two fellas who uh, went from charismatic to devious overnight. Pretty sure they were fixing to rob me or something because they ended up being really pushy to get me back to the party at their hotel. I got hella red flags. Absolutely not. Pretty sure they were even trying to booze me up a little extra. I left that situation and I took my ass to bed. Damn near ran <laughs> from there. Pretty sure I just got set up to be robbed. There's no fucking joke out here actually. So that's a story for another day. Maybe I'll tell it on stream soon. Saturday, day of the fight. I'm hurting a little bit, if I'm being honest, courtesy of the guys last night at the bar. Thanks, dicks. But I get up and walk around to see the city in the light, and it's beautiful. Like sure, there's a lot of graffiti and a lot of busted down areas, but it's beautiful to see the people out and about. And there's even little trickles of sunshine. Look at you. What are you doing here? You're bad. I had a suspect ass breakfast, and that immediately kind of turned me off from the cuisine down there. I know it gets dogged on a lot. It's just that specific dish, I was like, oof. I don't know if I'm, I might have to, oof. And even through the pain, I wrapped my balls up and I got a little workout in at the hotel, which made me want to vomit, which I tried to. We move. So I get to the arena early. It's at the AO Arena. And I hang out at a pub nearby. And I'm still kind of hurting here because I realized anytime I sat down and didn't move, I was like, ooh. It's warm in this pub, so I was just kind of getting up and moving around and doing whatever I could. Taking back a pint. <laughs> Observation time though. The bathroom at the pub was tiny. Like my office is not that big, but it's at least two of those bathrooms. Toilets, excuse me. So this is the entrance. You walk in the door, tiny teeny hallway, probably this long, right here into the fucking boxing bag. Two baby urinals on the right, sink right there in the corner. And if I take a little step or ruski here, there's a stall. Everything's kind of in arm's distance. So if I'm standing at the entrance here after the teeny tiny hallway, I can reach one urinal. I can't really reach the second one, it's close. And I can 
reach the sink on tippy toes and I can definitely grab the stall door. That's how small it is, right? Now, once again, these are all individual experiences. I'm not gonna say it represents the whole, just something I noticed. I went to piss a lot because once again, tiny bladder gang. But I noticed if there was ever one fella at the urinal pissing and there was a guy in front of me in said line, he wouldn't park it next to him to piss. He would wait for him to leave and then he'd go and pee. And I understand that some people were pee shy. There wasn't like a border in between the urinals. But like, if I gotta piss, I'm gonna piss. And I wouldn't even bring this up if not for when it got weirder, when I saw two guys not even consider peeing in the urinals at all because they had exclaimed that they were small urinals, you know, I guess, cause they were really close to each other. So instead of peeing, which I couldn't tell cause I was in tiny hallway, they were in front of me. I thought there was just a line. There wasn't. They were just waiting for the shitter in the stall to finish doing what he's doing. I'm at the and then they would swap in there. And like, I get it, small urinals, close together. I get if you don't wanna feel each other's fucking traps when you're pissing, but it wasn't that close. Like, is it a gay thing? It was it like too much manly men's at the pub? I don't know, like I said, it's just something I noticed. I thought it was odd for a group of men who were far too willing to hold their piss for something that didn't seem like it mattered. Like, I, there was times where I would just cut in front and be like, I'm gonna piss. And I get in the corner over there. This guy's over here. This guy's, you know, he was, he was, he was running the corner out. That's all you had to do if you wanted to make it a little less awkward. You didn't want to go peen peen. You know, he would just hit me with the corner. He, he, he hit me to the back. And I'd be like, all right, I'll hit, pause. He hit, <laughs> he hit me to the back, not what you said. You know, we would just, we would just corner up. Corner, corner. What's wrong with that? That place seemed to work until he started like farting and shit. I pulled out the piss. There's this fucking like six eight guy here, and he's one of the guys who are really loud when they're pissing. So he's like, <sighs> just let all of a sudden let out a clapper. I'm like right here. I'm like, yeah, it's crazy that that just hit my thigh. But like I said, if I gotta pee, I'm gonna pee. This is some of the casualties of war you have to deal with when you when you're doing this. Anyways, I've taken too long of this. So right outside the pub, uh, you could have started lining up already. I could have lined up really early, but it was also downpouring pretty bad, and I was not about to get my outfit soaked just to get in earlier to the stadium. I think that's fucking crazy. Once I saw it clear up a little bit, and then I actually went to go line up, uh, the line was like all the way around the corner, pretty crazy like. I'm kind of glad it was because I got to see these vans driving around the arena that were just billboards for Tommy Fury. He's the guy fighting on the main event, if you're just completely unaware of that. And it was for his partnership with Air Up. And at first I just saw one van that was to my side and I thought, oh, that's smart. They know a bunch of people are in line, free press. Then I heard this one van that was bumping like some UK rap. And I was like, oh, what the hell's making all, oh, it's another billboard. And then I actually looked past that guy and I was like, oh, there's a fuck ton of vans that all have the same exact ad on them of Tommy Fury with Air Up. And the funnier thing is the guy who was playing the music, the one song, when that song finished, we had like two minutes of silence, and then he just played that song again. The same exact song. Loud as fuck, mind you. And then he just kept doing that. Like he figured out how to repeat the song. That's all I heard the entire time I was in line. Keep in mind, I was in line for like 40 minutes hearing that song, looking at the same ad, which I figured out was like a video by the way, because every now and then the video would repeat. Keep in mind, nothing's moving, it's just a photo, but it was exported as an MP4 because every now and then it would just show the title of it at the bottom, which said like advertisement vanside.mp4. And the ad was even a shot at KSI too. It said legacy built, not tattooed, which for those of you who don't know, KSI has the word legacy tattooed on his upper back. That's the shot, so that made it kind of even more funny. They also had like the reject van that had furiously hydrating, which fucking sucks. So I finally get a look inside and wow, it's beautiful. I'm looking down the steps. I see the DAZN little screen going crazy over there. There's already some people in the ring talking about something and I get hype as hell. Let me complain about the arena. Now this was the AO arena. I went online to look at some reviews of it. It's got nothing but flying colors, great reviews. So I don't know if I'm the first, but there's no way in hell I'm the last to tell you that your bathroom setup is rubbish. There were two bathrooms on the floor we entered in on. Two men's bathrooms, two women's bathrooms, obviously. So I immediately went into the men's bathroom to file some paperwork and I saw that there's a line. And from my angle, it looked like there were only two stalls or some shit. And there was eight guys in front of me. So I just thought, okay, well, let me go look for another. And I find the other one, and this is the bigger bathroom. This bathroom has no joke about like fucking 40 urinals. And I turned the corner of it and there's three stalls and another line of about eight guys in front of me waiting to use them. 
make it nine. Uh, so there I am spending my first like 25 minutes in the arena, just standing around watching men enter in with bewilderment and disappointment. You saw a lot of guys hustle in super fast, then they look up and be like, no, my worst nightmare in front of me. And they, they don't know what to do. They're distraught. I feel you. And in about five minutes, I turn around and I see another fucking dozen guys waiting behind me. I wish I could record, but it's fucking, you know, crazy to record in the bathroom, but probably downright illegal, I'm pretty sure. But like a whole dozen guys waiting behind me. All too shit. This is an arena that is not currently full. They're still letting people in. There was a big ass line behind me. The arena's not full and there's a fucking 20 man parade waiting to shit. With the amount of space in that bathroom, in that toilet, you could have cut out half of the urinals and just added like another five stalls. Even another three would make a massive difference. Not to mention, out of the three stalls, the middle stall didn't have a functioning lock. So the guy that I saw go in there, who didn't know that, he's like, keeps throwing it against the fucking thing, keeps flying back. And he's like, so he had to just like do a little fucking hot yoga while he's trying to pinch out a few soldiers, trying to keep the door closed. And I just kept thinking, please, God, don't let me be the next one for that bathroom. Just give me another one, please. Let the other guy finish shitting, please. Luckily he did, and I got to sit down and enjoy my time. Uh, but yeah, that's fucking horrible. What's not horrible were my seats. I had fucking amazing seats. I knew I had good seats. Didn't know how good the seats were until I pulled up. So I had floor seats. My floor seats were right outside the press area, really important people area. It was split up in like circles, right? So the first circle, the first horde right outside the ring are like press people, really fucking important people. And then there's the next horde, which was me. I was in that section. I wasn't on the side of everyone that's shown on the fights. So if you watch the fights naturally, like you'll see oh, a lot of the celebrities, a lot of the big dogs, right? They're on that side. I was opposite side. So some of the benefits of being on the floor is that we had a little bar tent area that we could go to and get drinks instead of having to fucking walk up all the stairs that we had to walk down to get to the floor. And after being around a bit and talking to a bartender, I realized, oh, we also have toilets for us too. You just gotta go in this tunnel and there's a whole set of toilets, which was sick because tiny bladder gang. I went in there and guess what? There's like five stalls in this one, all open. And I thought, wow, all functioning locks too? Ayo Arena's stepping its shit up. Now here's the problem though. The prelim fights were about to start and I realized I should probably eat because I didn't really eat that well and I knew I was gonna be there a minute. So I walk up the stairs because there's no food down there on the floor. You gotta go upstairs and I just go get a massive fucking glizzy. It's just a huge like foot long hot dog. Nothing else really seemed that appetizing, so whatever. I grab that, give me a little bag for it. Do 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 do, I go back. So with my glizzy, I go to the bar tent down there, I get a rum and coke and I go find my seat. Now this is what happened, step by step. When you walk down the stairs, there's people who check your shit right there at the bottom of the stairs. Person who checked my shit, I was like, hey, do you know where I'm gonna be? She was like, yeah, you're gonna be right there. Go walk by that guy. He'll tell you where to go. I was like, all right, cool. And I go walk by that guy, but then he just walks away and I was like, okay. So I start looking like at the rows and I'm like, I don't, I don't recognize these rows. It doesn't, doesn't match with what's on my ticket. So I'm like, okay, well, I just keep, you know, like I said, I went to go get a drink. So there's another guy over there and I go ask him. So he says, oh, you're gonna be over there, which was the nice area, like right outside the press area, right? He's like, I'll, I'll just walk you up. Cool. Appreciate that, man. Really nice of you. Now for those nice areas, that like second row, there's about three to four security personnel at each entrance. And as I'm walking up with the guy, the first prelim fight has just started between DTG and SX. And the security guy just let someone in. So I go up to him, show my ticket. Before my screen even turns to his direction, he just says, now, right now, you're gonna have to wait, sit down. Huh? And he sits down along with all the other security, they all take a seat. And there I am standing like a fucking idiot. Little tiny crowd starts to gather by me too because they're trying to get in as well, not knowing what's happening. And I still don't know why he did that. I'm guessing because the fight was happening. But like, what the fuck does that matter? Because I don't know if you know this, but like there's gonna be a lot of those today. Like, is this a rule? Can I not walk in when there's a fight? That sounds preposterous. Anyway, the first round finishes and then he gets up to talk to me. And I ask him, hey, do you know where my seat is? Show him my ticket. I'm in section C. But he looks at my ticket and he says, no, you're not here. You're actually gonna be by section D because of where your seat is. You gotta walk down there and go in through there. I said, okay. So I march it down to section D. And I show the guy my ticket there. And he says, no, 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 you're in section C, not here. Yeah, yeah, well the guy over there 
set me over here because he said I couldn't enter in through over there. That's when another security guy pipes up in the back and he's like, you're in section C, you gotta go in through C. Okay, so I march it back and I go up to the guy and I'm like, hey, they told me I can't go in through there. And he's like, yeah, but that's where your seat is. And they told me I can't, what do you, what do you want me to do? He's like, all right, come with me. So we both march it. Back to D. And I can kind of hear their conversation. He's like, hey, this guy's seat is gonna be right here. They're like, nah, he's in C. <laughs> he's gotta go through C. And he's like, listen, but if he's go if he goes through C, he's gonna have to cut through all those people right there because he's right there by D. And they're like, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my bad, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So he finally turns back to me. He's like, yeah, my bad, man. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all good. But you can't bring in that drink, though. What? You talking about the drink that I got from the bar that was made specifically for floor seats? So I don't ask any questions. And I slam my rum and coke, throw it in the trash, and I walk back to D. And the front, one of the first guys stops me. Right, where are you gonna be? And the other guy who's seen me already 19 times, he's like, no, 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 he's good, he's good, he's good. He can come through. So I'm like, all right, cool, I can finally sit down. So I lift up my hot dog to scooch past him. He can't bring that in. And I laugh. And I laugh in his face. And it's not because I think he's joking. It's because I know he's serious. <laughs> I'm like watching myself from like a television show angle. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? You saw, you didn't see everything in my, maybe you didn't, whatever. The funny thing is that there I am, halted. And I am now being forced to gobble down this foot long glizzy to get to my seat. And this is the age of camera phones. So instead of just throwing that bad boy down, I just reached into there and started breaking it off into pieces and fucking tossing it back like Doritos. And I didn't even get any ketchup or anything. So I was just scarfing down wiener and bun. And I'm trying to eat it quickly because I want to fucking sit down already. So I look like a madman just tearing this apart and, do, and it's dry, it's dry as hell, so I can't eat it that fast. I end up just grabbing wiener at the end of it. Sorry, cause the bun is just dry as shit. I was like, oh, let me get just the protein out of it. Then another security guard approached me and he's like, what are you doing? You can't just be standing here. As I'm there with a mouthful of dry glizzy. Luckily, one of the other security guards steps in for me and he's like, he's just finishing his food so he can come in. So instead of letting that situation continue to fester, I just leave like a fourth of it because frankly, I'm not even that hungry anymore anyways. I dump it and I walk back in. The guy who like knows me now, he's like, go ahead, cool. I walk in, there's another security guard there cause there's like kind of like another, there's like two little circles there almost. So I have to go past the next one and he checks my ticket and he's like, all right, yeah, you right here. And I finally sit down at my seat. And frankly, I thought it was preposterous that I couldn't have a drink at my seat. I'm assuming it's because of people throwing shit. Like I know Misfits events specifically have had fights like ringside because people have thrown shit like bottles. Everybody's gotta fucking ruin everything. And I don't know if that was the rule for just those enclosed sections that I was in or if it was for every floor seat because there were, there were floor seats like right by the bar tent area that weren't enclosed in any kind of way, but they were floor seats. But with that, I saw another problem arise. That one floor bar actually got pretty damn packed and organization quickly went out the window. So the bar had like five people set up, right? Which is pretty damn good. But you go up there, you get a drink, and everybody had a little bit of room in the front here, like when you're talking to the register, so you would cut left or cut right, because there were little pathways with little guardrails where you could go around to funnel out. Uh, problem being, after people just started gathering together to just chit chat or just drink their drink and watch the fight from there, those pathways filled up because nobody was, there was a few security guards, but like, they're not gonna be fighting for these people to move. There was so many people there at one point that what you would have to do is grab a drink, turn around and then be like, excuse me, sorry, please let me through, sorry, blah, 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 like, and you just gotta, you just gotta fight. You just gotta, you gotta fucking just, just dash. That's it. Because like I said, I don't know the rules for the other floor seats, but for me, for example, if I get a fucking pint and I see Salt and Slim are fighting, what do you expect me to do? Because I realistically have two options. I either stand somewhere, drink my drink, watching the fight, or I slam that pint and then get back to my seat. You see the problem here, right? Because they don't want a crowd there by the bar. They did it, they made that clear. But what do you want me to do when I just bought a drink? There's no way you're encouraging us to just down these, right? And the only place you could definitely, definitely stand by was that bar area. Because once you went down the lane area by like where I was at with C and D, those motherfuckers were telling you to move. You could not stop moving because that was fast lane area. So as the crowds grew, you have security attempt to try and move us. The problem is the guys who are over here aren't the spooky-ooky 
security guards that were like the personnel by closer to the ring. The guys over here were basically the guys who show you to your seat. So nobody gave a fuck when they saw a lanky 20 year old coming up to them in a yellow shirt being like, hey guys, you gotta move. Like I watched this happen. I watched a guy pressing this little circle of people who were chilling there, grown men. Some of them looked like they box. And he was like, hey guys, you gotta move. Come on, seriously. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at first he was ignoring it for like the first three times he said it. And he was like, come on guys, seriously, you gotta move. You know, this, and these, this guy doesn't give a fuck. And he doesn't really have to give a fuck. Like, what are you gonna do? Raise your voice? You're not gonna kick me out. You're not gonna put hands on me. There was no reason to respect you. And half of the other yellow shirts, most of the other yellow shirts didn't give a damn. They're like, I'm not about to do this. They made their bed, they should lie in it. What do you want me to do? Like the crowd is filled with boxing fans, actual boxers, and like fucking influencers. That sounds like the worst crowd to try and like dial down. Like I'm not mad they were trying to move people. I get the rules. I just think it was set up a bit stupid. Now I'm gonna get to the fights right now. Let me just give you a few little last bits and pieces here. Uh, Chris Hansen, a name you might have not expected me to say here, but if you watched the press conference, Logan Paul brought out Chris Hansen so he could call Dylan Dennis a predator and like he could do the whole thing and be like, oh, I read the chat logs. Even though he kind of immediately got shit on and Dylan was like, you should pay your taxes because <laughs> that was a thing. How Dylan knew that off the top of his head, I don't know. I feel like maybe he got prepped for it. Maybe he got a little tip that he was going to be there. But yeah, he was kind of shitting on him so much so that like Logan was trying to grab the mic from Chris because he was like, maybe, maybe you should stand back. Let me, let me, let me hop in real quick. Like, like tag me in coach. But Chris Hansen was actually at the fight. He wasn't just there for the press conference. And I walked right past the guy. He, he was right here. He was right here. I was right here. And I walked right past him. I looked him in the face. He didn't look at me because he was looking at the fight. But I was like... No. I went to the bathroom. Tiny platter, okay? I didn't say hi. I don't know if the guy doesn't like me or if he's got like real problems with me. I don't. Yeah, at this point, it's a bit of a meme to me. You know, I had more, more of an actual problem with his accomplice. But it was just like a quick time event and I was like, oh, uh, LP. And you live with it and we move. If I managed to catch a flick with the man, would it have broken the internet? Of course. Wouldn't have broken the internet, but it would have been a fun photo. Yeah, like I said, I don't fucking know. So I just want to go pee. So when I saw how nice my seats were and I was like, oh, well, I'll probably recognize some people People that are by me because I'm assuming it's gonna be like some influencers or something and I didn't really recognize anybody I knew one person in front of me was like for sure a fighter he was all tatted up had the suit had the chains had everything and he was like talking about boxing the whole time and he was like yeah man this are you see his books <laughs> or whatever a little further out from me I could see the beta squad over there and like Nick Amalana and stuff I saw like Logan Paul's group was like a little in front of me over there I could see like his mom continuously getting up the commentators are right in front of me and there was a fella a few seats down to my left and I made eye contact with him and I immediately thought, I know you, you're a fighter, but I couldn't think of his fucking name. That's until afterwards, uh, people started sending me screenshots of me on video because he was recording his own reactions and he also seemed like he had kind of a guy recording for him. And that's when I figured out that that was Vidal Riley, a very good boxer. And I know him, but I just couldn't connect the face. I suck at that. So yeah, uh, let's run through the fights. We started with the prelim fights. These were the smaller names. This was free to watch. SX versus DTG. I don't know much about either. I just know DTG was on a card before and I know SX was on that song. I don't like that, yeah, don't like And he had never boxed. So I had DTG just cause fight experience. In that fight, SX was getting caught early and as soon as I saw him start to do this shit where he's like running around facing the audience, as he's getting hit, I knew, yeah, it's probably a wrap. He luckily got out of the first round, but by the second round, when he did that again, the fight was rightfully stopped. And it was funny, because SX did the thing that all influencer boxers do when someone stops the fight. It's just like, I had him. And it's like, bro, you had your whole ass back to him. <laughs> and you're getting like struck in the head. At the end of the day, you're just not defending yourself. They're gonna stop the fight. I'm one for one. Next up was Astrid Wet versus Alexia Grace. I'd actually seen Astrid on another card bust up AJ Bunker. So I had Astrid on this one. And I knew dick all about Alexia. But revisiting it now, I guess they had set up a fight before themselves, but it ended up being this weird stunt where Alexia speared Astrid to a table and then the stream ended. Influencers are insane. Closer fight than the first. To me, Alexia had all the stamina and just came in with flurries. Nasser just had the jab open all day, just trying to keep her ass away. But unfortunately, Alexia was also the only one that got knocked down, which I think played a big role in Astrid winning by majority decision. And I am now two for two. Also, Alexia has since filed an appeal with the Professional Boxing Association to reconsider their decision.
I knew the next fight was gonna be a banger. I couldn't believe this was on the prelims. Yeah, Chase Damore, who's built like a fucking gladiator, but don't let Temple Arts fool you. I've seen him fight before. He's a dog, and I had my money on him to upset Chase. The first round was crazy and was really the first real outburst of hype from the crowd. Because Chase caught Temple a few times and he had him on the ropes just swinging, and you like the refs on the side keeping an eye like, oh shit, am I gonna have to call this? But then Temple, the dog he is, catches Chase with some shots out of it, so much so that Chase has to clinch. Rest of the fight slowed down, and by body language alone, on both sides, Chase seemed to be the winner. And in a split decision, Tempo won. I'm three for three. Chase has since filed an appeal with the Professional Boxing Association to reconsider the decision. So I was excited for the next fight because I actually really like Swarms. I think he's a great entertainer. He was originally gonna verse Ryan Taylor again. He had beaten him previously with one punch, which like gave him like an eye laceration or something. They had to stop the fight. Swarms dubbing himself One Punch Man. But like Ryan Taylor got arrested or some shit. Uh, so he couldn't fight. So Ed Matthews stepped in and he fought him last minute. I only knew Ed Matthews because he fought Blueface and got just fucking molly -whopped, but that fight didn't even seem fair. Blueface had like a 20 foot reach on him. Anyways, in this fight, I had Swarms. So I was on the side, clapping, cheering for my guy. And about 20 seconds in, Swarms hits the canvas. And I have no clue what the fuck happened. I didn't see him get hit. And he got knocked out on my side of the ring. Like after the fight, I was legit asking people like, hey, did you see what happened? because I, I still don't know what happened. Even watching the replay, I don't know. Even watching the match online, there doesn't seem to be a great angle of the knockdown. I went to go rewatch the prelim show with the commentators and Deji was watching that fight and he's like, he didn't hit him. That shot didn't land. He didn't even get hit. It was very tough to see the shot. But ultimately, I guess Ed threw a punch and fucking it smoked swarms on the chin and he didn't get up within 10 seconds. That was the fight. Which is one of those moments where you're like, damn, that guy fought KSI before swarms. And yeah, I I'm three for four. So the prelims are over and we move on to the actual card. First fight, I'm hyped for it. Crazy hype. It's a tag team match. I know, tag team, what? They do stuff like this from time to time. If you're a boxing purist, it probably hurts you. I'm not, I just wanna see these boys duke it out. So it's B-Dave and Luis Pineda against Alex Osabi and Nick Alameo. And this might've been the only match where I made it very clear what my bias was. Because B-Dave is a legend, and Pineda's a legend, frankly. Basically, Pineda also fought KSI and went out sad. He was complaining a shit ton through the fight, people were booing him, got dog walked in the ring, and he basically became a meme in the community. He was just this kid from Mexico who, on paper, was a professional boxer, and he got the opportunity of a lifetime because KSI was finding like last minute opponents. Shortly after, B Dave was on the card against a mystery opponent, and that's when Pineda had the sickest entrance of all time, starting with the Undertaker theme transitioning into Cancion del Mariachi, and the crowd went wild because they were like, there's no fucking way they brought this guy back. That's crazy. I remember I was at home watching, and I started yelling, saying, it's fucking Pineda. A no shot, freaking out. And Pineda boxed and whooped on B Dave a little bit, getting the crowd behind him. He even scored a knockdown, and he kind of had his redemption story off that. And at the same time, B Dave earned a lot of respect from me, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people because that motherfucker's got a chin. So it was then perfectly set up afterwards where B Dave and Pineda would join forces as a tag team, their first match being against Ice Poseidon and some other guy that I don't remember, but they had a showing and they beat the shit out. It's hard to get people to cheer for Ice Poseidon, they whooped his ass. And and they were the winners and people were happy about it. Woo, everyone supports them now. Now last I saw of Alex Wasabi was Creator Clash 2, where he beat the dog shit out of iDubs at his own event. And I think Nick is pretty talented too. He was on the main event as well on Misfits. So I obviously wanted the boys to win, cheering them on nonstop. But since we're doing this, if I was a betting man, BD Pineda, I'm sorry, I love you guys, genuinely, I would choose Wasabi and Nick. I did choose Wasabi and Nick. I had him winning simply because I thought Wasabi was gonna make the difference. And man, was this, fight everything I wanted it to be and more. One of the most entertaining fights on the card in my opinion. Great opener to the card. And early on my prediction about Wasabi seemed to be pretty accurate because he fucking knocked down my boy. I had to look at Pineda hit the canvas. That's not easy for someone to do. But thankfully he got back up, tags in B-Dave, who then comes in like a truck, like a bull in a base shot. And he goes over and he, and he starts swinging and he knocks down Wasabi, which Wasabi is saying it wasn't a knockdown, but he knocked his ass down. And he looks over at Pineda like, I got you, we're still in this, which I loved. And overall, B-Dave really impressed me. He deserves a proper fight, which 
He has gotten now because he's actually headlining the next Misfits event going against Jarvis and B-Dave. I won't bet against you again, my boy. I got you on this one. There was a lot of little great moments, but one of my favorite ones was Pineda coming in to fight and then Wasabi tagging out and Pineda yelling at him like, no, motherfucker, I want you. After he knocked his ass down, he was like, no, I, that wasn't fair. Come on, get your ass over here. Don't tag in your guy. Anyway, the fight ends in a draw, which I don't really argue with. I feel like it could have gone either way by the end of it, but I believe because of that draw, uh, Los Pineda Coladas, who beat Dave and Pineda's team. Um, I believe they're still the tag team champions. But unfortunately, that does mean that I'm 3-8 for 5 now. Uh, Los Pineda Coladas have since filed an appeal with the Professional Boxing Association to reconsider their decision. I'm not joking. Why did I write such a long fucking stupid script? No one's even gonna watch this video. Next fight! Winterson Nunez versus my mate Nate. I had Nunez, Nate won. Three for six. King Kenny versus... I'm sorry. I was getting a drink for the Nunez fight. I had seen both these guys get rocked by Kenny on Kingpin. So I just kind of guessed Nunez. This was like the fight I was least interested in on the card. I mean, I guess this fight was applauded for being a very technical fight, which is, you know, that's awesome. I just remember the crowd being radio silent nearly the entire fight. But cheers to those guys regardless. King Kenny versus Anthony Taylor. Kenny had just come off a hot streak at Kingpin, and AT had just silenced a fiery salt poppy. And Anthony's got a bit of notoriety for hugging a lot, and I don't know, AT just seems to get the dub, so I had AT in this one. I wanted Kenny to win, but I had AT in this one. And as much as Nico Amalana wanted to hype up the crowd behind him to chant Kenny throughout the fight, um, the fight went exactly how I thought it was gonna go. AT did AT, Kenny tried, and uh, AT took a unanimous dub. Four for seven. Dean versus Walid. This is the one. Now, if you guys want to watch one of the best fights on Misfits, period, watch Dean and Walid's first fight because this was their long awaited rematch. These guys fucking hate each other. They are both very talented fighters and they would give anybody on Misfits problems. So Dean won the first fight after getting knocked down multiple times. He ended up slumping Walid by the end of it and it was a little bit controversial how the fight ended, but he won. So if Walid was able to get a W here, we would definitely have a crazy trilogy on our hands. I had Dean on this one, but I would not be shocked if Walid made me out to look like a fool. And as soon as the fight starts, Walid catches Dean in his first combo. A nasty shot, I see Dean stumble and I thought, not like this, not this quick. But Dean settled in and worked and he would knock down Walid twice. And crazy enough, he, he throws out his arm at one point and it's very noticeable, but there he fought with one arm. As Soon as he throws it out, he just switches to Southpaw and he just was like, I'm just gonna fucking let loose with this one arm. Crazy. Making the fight even better, Walid ends up having this crazy rally at the end, which makes it look like it's gonna be deja vu just flipped of the last fight, where he got knocked down multiple times, but now he's gonna come out with a last minute fucking knockout, cause Dean is eating punches. So much so, Dean's like leaning on the ropes a few times. Nothing's count as a knockdown though. And Dean wins by unanimous decision. Insane fight, one of my favorites on the card. Five for eight. Next fight, Slim vs. Salt Poppy. Two fighters who should need no introduction if you're familiar with the scene. I'm a big Salt fan, I love his swagger, shout out the Philippines, and I had Salt in this one. And man, what a fight. Salt had some moments, he definitely did, he was styling on him a little bit, but it was just a ticking time bomb for Slim, the motherfucking Hitman Albar. Slept him. Slept my boy Salt, man. It's hard to see. Right there in the corner, pop. Stuns him, one more for reassurance. Sleeps him, he gets up but it's only a matter of time at that point. Just finish the job until the ref ran in, called it. And you gotta respect Slim. He came into that fight feeling like an underdog and that man is not to be played with. I'm really curious what he does next. Slim hasn't lost in the influencer boxing scene. He's one of the few that hasn't. And obviously I hope Salt gets back in the gym and comes back stronger. But I am unfortunately now a five for nine heading into our main events, but I am the clutch God. By the way, during that fight, you know, the guy next to me was like, who you got? And I was like, oh, I got Salt. And he was like, oh, I got Slim, knockout, first round. Okay, sure. You know, I had no problem. I was like, cool, let's watch a good fight. Slim knocks him out and he's just like, what, what happened to your boy? <laughs> I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> I thought we were enjoying the fight, bro. Why you chirping at me now, chill. Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis. I was elated going into this fight because it was a long time coming. All the shit talk, all the bad blood, even the little lead up incidents, it was gonna get settled in the ring, 
one way or another. I just remember sitting there thinking, it's actually happening. I said it out loud, it's actually happening. This is fucking crazy that I'm here watching this. So they had a line of security guards in the middle of the ring separating both sides. Interlocked arms, making sure they're not getting moved. And it was time. And a lot of people complained about this fight. Rightfully so, because basically, Dylan didn't really fight, like at all. I think Logan came in wanting to do one thing, and that was knock him the fuck out. And I think Dylan came into it wanting to do one thing, and that was knock it, knock the fuck out. I think Dylan knew the game, and I think he knew he wasn't gonna win. So he thought, well, how do I go about this? Well, I'll see if I can, you know, catch him with a crazy counter shot, which he tried multiple times, caught him a few times too, but Logan wasn't going down. So he clowned around a bit. He kept laughing off Logan's shots every time to prove like, ah, Logan's weak, right? He get hit with a flurry and he'd be like, Come on, man, really that shit? Ha, ah, this guy's crazy. He tried to grapple him a few times and then uh, he also just turtled on the ground randomly. I think it was like a jujitsu thing, who knows? Like worst case scenario for Dylan was getting knocked out. If that happens, he loses the war. His Twitter replies for the next six months are gonna be that shot. That shot in many different ways. And keep in mind guys, I was there. Starting the fight, Logan was not cheered for. Dylan was. But because Dylan refused to fight, essentially made a mockery of the main event that a lot of people paid to watch, by the end of it, Dylan was being booed to hell and back and everybody was cheering for Logan. So in his quest to not look like an idiot and get knocked the fuck out, what he did I think it ended up being worse for him because then you just pissed off all the viewers who wanted to see something. Like I think if he went in there, gave it an honest attempt and got knocked out, like at least he'd get that respect like he tried. He went in there, he tried to fight, he got knocked out. Sure, that was gonna be his Twitter replies, but he wouldn't be getting the energy he's getting right now. I think it backfired on him, whatever the fuck he was trying to do. So Logan's getting cheered for, but then like Nina's still getting booed, which was adjacent to the booing of the national anthem when that came on. And I won't get into the Nina topic, but Dylan actually ended up losing by DQ. He was gonna lose regardless, which he knew. So at the end of it, he tried getting Logan like in a fucking guillotine one last time, which he didn't. He falls on the floor and then Logan goes in for like a hammer fist, which he barely misses. And by the way, when that final round was ending, everybody in the stadium knew what was gonna happen. They had security lined up all around the boxing ring in fucking sprint position, ready to spring in from every angle. So once Logan went in for the hammer fist and missed, Dylan tried to go up to him. His big security guard got in his way. Dylan actually fucking throws two punches at the guy, misses. And that's when the ring fills up and the whole thing's in fucking shambles. Time passes with nothing happening. Logan's just celebrating. I don't even see Dylan from my angle. I just see him eventually leave and everyone fucking booing him when he does. And he's still trying to talk sweet on Twitter right now. Like he has leverage, but I mean, he you lost and, and you pissed a lot of people off, but like not in the cute troll way you thought it was. I don't know. I, even though a lot of people complain about the fight and regretted paying for it, I think since I was there, it was different for me. Cause even though it's disappointing he didn't fight, it was, I don't know, I think for me it was just like, I'm just happy to be here type shit. Like this is just cool. I'm just excited. <laughs> so I wasn't really too mad about it. That doesn't really sit on my heart like that. So yeah, Logan won by DQ and I'm now six for 10. Dylan Dennis has since filed an appeal with the Professional Boxing Association to reconsider their decision. I think claiming he, the Logan should have been DQ'd first, who cares? That isn't gonna do shit. And the main main event, KSI versus Tommy Fury. I had Tommy, but to see KSI win and have that stadium implode, I'd pay good money to see that. In fact, I did. <laughs> but yes, unfortunately, we saw another subpar fight. It was a lot of clinching, a lot of clinching. There was a point where I kept seeing them separate after getting in the clinch. Pretty sure you've seen TikToks of this and it's KSI doing his thing. And then he would just fucking swing in with an overhand, miss, they clinch, and then KSI is just fucking working in the clinch and just starts fucking smoking them, right? And then they separate, then he does it again. <laughs> just, it just kept happening at one point. The most high part was the first round because KSI actually got a big right, which I had a beeline view of Tommy's head flying. And I remember standing up and being like, no fucking way. And then not much else happened after that. Uh, the ref was really funny. Since they kept clinching, instead of being like, hey, if you, you should probably actually really stop that. All he started doing, he started slapping them to separate. Like at one point they were in a clinch and he just goes up to KSI and he goes, like a little toddler, <laughs> like he was a little, he's being bad. You stop it. You super bad. I, no, I'm serious, watch the fight. And you can hear that shit too. It echoed through the stadium. It was a slap. 
They actually docked Tommy a point for shots at the back of the head, which was crazy. But as I'm sure you all heard by now, the fight would end with Tommy winning by a very controversial split decision. And I know people have brought up a rematch. My opinion, no one gives a fuck, respectfully. It's KSI and Jake or bust. As far as KSI's next opponent, Jake, he can keep doing his thing. KSI, I feel like it only makes sense to go to Jake now. I don't think we wanna see KSI fight anybody else at this point. Cause I know Jake's fighting in December. I don't know who as of now, but yeah. I mean, I do think KSI can retire. He'll always have that Jake meme hang over him a bit, but I think he performed well against Tommy. Definitely better than people thought he would. And I think the Jake thing isn't so much like a criticism against KSI as it's more like a disappointment. Like why didn't we set this up? Cause I'm sure there's blame on both sides. So, and I ended my predictions seven for 11. And KSI has since filed an appeal with the Professional Boxing Association to reconsider their decision. Overall, I had a great time. There were great fights, great moments. Fight of the night was Dean and Waleed in my opinion. And I love the chaos of the tag team fight. I will definitely be going to a Misfits event in the future. Just hopefully something in the States. And outside of the fights, after the fights I went home, got some food clocked, went to go see Andrew Schultz the next day, hilarious, saw my buddy The Pigeon Show for a bit, and then my vacation came to an end. I was very tired for my flight, my sleep was all the way fucked up, and I had another two flight 11 hour banger to look forward to. It sucked balls, but luckily I did sleep through most of this one. Back home obviously, this video's late, but I've been a bit of a busy boyo and I'm just trying to get my routine back cause it's been rough. But if you watch this all the way through, cheers, I appreciate that. I do kind of like doing videos like this because I've heard people throw on the term video diary and it's not really, it's never really meant anything to me. But when I made that video talking about the Denver Nuggets championship and how I went over there for a day to watch it, came back. I like that I can go back to that video and kind of relive that moment like very vividly as opposed to just kind of digging in my cranium and being like, what was that like? But combined with the editing, the narration and the videos that I took, like it's just, it's a really cool way to look back on stuff like this and that's what I wanted to get out of this video even though this video is long as fuck but that's what I wanted to get out of this video because I do want to remember this because this was something really fucking cool that I did and I I just like in the fucking Denver Nuggets video it's something I couldn't have done without your guys' support you guys are the reason that I'm blessed enough to even do something fucking stupid like this like fly all the way to Manchester and watch a bunch of YouTubers beat this shit out of each other so I thank you guys for that genuinely thank you to Manchester for having me and shout out to everyone who showed me love over there I appreciate it very much um yeah fucking we got a new website with new merch if you want to check it out as always i am mr gg and i am out Bye.